Good morning, friends. It's Bob Branch again, bringing you another Daily Devo. We are in a series of, this, of exploring this idea of we're working together with God, that we are God's co-workers, that he is working with us and we're working alongside of him, bringing the goods of the kingdom of heaven to this world every single day. We are also in day five of our 21-day gift or generosity challenge, and that is this idea that we are asking God every day, would you allow me to participate with you and to give something to someone today, help me to be able to see, and so that I can get in the habit of being generous, because you are generous, Lord. So you're God's co-workers, and we've been talking in this whole thing about, about God setting up these things called we call divine appointments, that we, he has set up some kind of chance meeting between us and someone else to bring something to them or for them to bring something to us from him, and we want to notice those things, and we want to jump in when we see those things. So I want to take just a few minutes this morning, and I want to ask you then to, to think with me for a moment, how is it that I then participate in this divine economy, this divine appointment sort of economy that God is doing all the time? I don't think that it's rocket science. I want to just suggest to you four components of a divine appointment. And we talked about yesterday the, the, the assumptions underneath that, but here are the components, and they're not hard. They're not difficult for us to follow. So what are those components of a divine appointment or the essential elements, if you will, of that? Well, element number one is simply ask, that, that we would ask the Lord. We would ask the Lord that he would, uh, well, actually in, in John, I mean, I'm sorry, in Matthew chapter nine, Jesus actually says, ask the Lord of the harvest to thrust out or to send out workers into his harvest field, that he sees something going on. And he says, ask me, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field. So the first part of this whole thing is simply to ask, Lord, today, would you use me? Use me today. I want to tell you, if you start praying these things every day, Lord, use me today, your life will become a marvelous adventure because God wants to use you all the time. He wants to utilize you. He doesn't want to use you up. He wants to utilize you in bringing the invisible kingdom of heaven visibly onto this earth. That's God's business. That's for you and that's for me. That's not just for me. That's not just for the elite. It's all. It's for all of us family members of Jesus's family. So ask, Lord, would you use me today? Would you allow me to, to step into what you're doing today? I want to see what you're doing. And so you ask the Lord to show you, to give you eyes to see and ears to hear him, to know what he's doing today. Simple, ask. Secondly, the second element is that we then look. It's an orientation of how we do life, of how we approach life, of how we approach others, is that we, we take that step out, that we're looking constantly. Remember that Jesus said that the Father loves him and shows him all that he does. So think about this in terms of Jesus's life and ministry. Jesus walks into the, to the pool of Bethesda, a functional hospital. The Father is healing one guy that day, and that's all. And Jesus walks up to the man and that the father shows him. And somehow Jesus knew with, with the father's leadership that this is the guy that he wants him to, to minister to. And he actually asked the guy, do you want to get well? Well, the guy doesn't actually answer the question. He's like, nobody's here. You know, they can bring me to the water when the angel stirs up the water. And all this, he, he just starts whining. Do you want to get well? And then Jesus heals him at that point in time. One guy, now you would think that this is a, this is a waste of a PR move because Jesus could make a tremendous public relations victory if he just cleared the place out, but it wasn't what the Father was doing. And so he, well, he asks and then he looks and the Father shows him. So we look throughout our days, different kind of things. There, they'll just be, for me, I'll be sitting somewhere and, and somebody will just make eye contact with me or, or the Lord will highlight someone or something or some family member or something like that. And I just need to make sure that I'm looking and that 
It's not a lot more complex than that. I ask and I look. I ask and I look. And I go throughout the day kind of looking, Lord, what are you doing? And it might be that you pray this in the morning, you pray it in, at 10 o'clock, and then you pray it at noon, and then you pray it at 2.30, and then you pray it at 5, and you pray it at 7, and you just ask the Lord. It's a, it's, perhaps it's a, it's a 10 second little missile up there. Lord, I want, I'm asking you, would you allow me to see what you're doing? And you just start schooling your own mind that way. You train your soul. So you ask, you look, and then when you notice, when you notice something, Henry Blackaby would say it this way, when you notice God at work, that is your invitation to join him in his work. So basically what we're doing is we're looking around and then we're looking around, Lord, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then you notice something. And when you notice something, that's your invitation to jump in. That doesn't mean, and especially, it doesn't mean that you always know what it means to jump in. It just means I'm drawn toward that. And so I'm going to ask the Lord in my own mind's eye, and I'm going to go engage the person. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Um, and, and if I have some impression from the Lord, I may actually try to slip that in. But most of the time, I just go and start to care for somebody. I, I just ask them, I'll sit down with them, or I'll pull a $20 bill out of my pocket or whatever that it is that the Lord is saying, I notice, I ask, I look, and I notice. And when you notice something, it is your invitation from God to jump in. Once you do, and that's the fourth the element, you ask, you look, you notice, you join, that you jump in, that you basically, instead of just sitting there, instead of trying to process all this through your gray matter and say, okay, I wonder if this is God, I wonder if this is not God. If you notice it, just say, Lord, if I notice something out of the ordinary, I'm just going to engage it and the Lord will make sure that you notice the right things. Really, it works that way. It's not rocket science. This isn't one of those things where God is trying to fake you out. He's not trying to speak in riddles. He's trying to use you to bring the, to make visible the invisible kingdom. His invisible love, he wants to make visible through you. So ask, look, notice, join. Say it with me. Ask, look, notice, join. We'll be talking about that in the days to come in all kinds of different ways. Ask, look, notice, join. Ask, look, notice, join. This is God's good and beautiful will for you and I that you are God's coworker. You are designed for this. He birthed you and brought you and adopted you into his family so that you could take part in the family business of making the invisible kingdom visible on this earth, visible to others, to make his invisible love visible to other people. This is you and this is me. We are God's coworkers. I'm praying for you and I, I believe in you. I believe that God has designed you for such a time as this. In this COVID crisis, in this pandemic, God is saying, I want to use you. So are you available to me? Or, and, and he's calling us to look outside of our own needs, outside of our own discomfort, out from outside of our own inconvenience, to look and see the way that he sees, to see the people that he sees, to see the work that he's doing, and to join him in that work. I love you. I'm praying for you all the time. Thanks so much for joining me. Talk to you tomorrow.